Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be going through my BCT Masters Madrid power rankings. Going to be going through all eight teams, letting you know what I think about them. Um, I renamed a lot of these tiers just because I feel like the lettered tiers don't exactly like accurately describe how I feel about every team. So I kind of just renamed them to more so like a like accurately represent what I think about them. Um, I've got a lot of Madrid content coming out. I'll be doing my top 10 players and my playoff pick -em, or not my playoff, but my group's pick -ems, Um, along with like, I'll be doing like picks on Twitter. Um, so go follow me on there. I'm doing a lot of that stuff over there, along with my updated player rankings that'll be going out on Twitter. I've already tweeted out my Pacific and my America's ones. Um, I don't know when my EMEA ones are going to come out. I got to watch like Giants and Foot and a little bit of Gentlemates as well. So those will be coming out once I do that. And yeah, uh, just go check out my Twitter for that kind of stuff. I'll be doing picks for every game on there, just like I did for kickoff. I went like 38 and 30 um, throughout all of kickoff between all four regions. Um, all of the playoff games just fucked me up. And honestly, play-ins for certain regions like EMEA and um, Pacific. Like those ones were specifically bad for me past groups. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, and now in this bottom tier, we have FPX. Uh, the, ter the tier is named Uh, just because this team is really weird. They play a lot of weird comps. They have some crazy individual players, not necessarily like, like super frag heavy necessarily, just like they make some insane decisions sometimes, in my opinion. Um... With those weird comps, like specifically their like Yoru Jet Astra comp on Breeze, I really didn't feel like they played into a lot of the strengths of that comp in terms of like splitting through halls and through mid. They kind of just like did a lot of straight out A hits, straight out B hits. Wasn't really a ton of thought in the like mid rounding or just calling um, for this team to me. I think Life is the worst non IGL individual at the event. Just some of the decisions he makes are abhorrently bad. Um, like, I, I just don't get it um, sometimes with him. And I, I just think for the worst team strategically and just don't have the individual skill to maybe not back it up to like, but to like supplement. Like, there's some teams here that I don't think are particularly great strategically, but have absurd individual players and are just better because of it then onto this next year of one of these teams will be sick as in like probably top three top four and another one will suck potentially being the worst team at the tournament or close to it and we're start out the bottom of this tier with team heretics now i know they played really well in emea they beat navi i don't think navi was playing their best in that game um i think some of their comps on certain maps and i don't really think their roles particularly were too great um but we're not talking about navi we're talking about heretics who i also think a lot of their run in emea but more to do with the individual skill um than like their strategy like anti strats and everything like that even though that was still very good like i think they did a really good job at ansi and carmen core in their one game that they played against them or in their one game they played two games but in the groups game that they played um and I just have some concerns that they'll be able to keep up this individual form. I think Boo is the main player that I'm concerned about just because he was playing so well as an IGL. I just, I don't see that form continuing. I think he can still be really good. I just don't think he's going to be as good as he was in EMEA, especially against better competition. Um, I was, one thing I did want to say is I was really wrong about Mini Boo. I really only watched the one match that they played at that offseason tournament that they lost like 2-3 or whatever and I did not think he was very good in that game um, maybe that was just a bad game from him maybe he's gotten a lot better over the offseason I don't know exactly what it was with him but he is very good um, and yeah Pat Attack was insanely good um, in the like flash support role like KO stuff that he was playing um, and I think he's one of the best subs in Valorant history, which we've had like a weirdly good amount of like weird amount of like really good subs like him. You got cigarettes. Um, you got who else? 
Cider at Copenhagen. You got Jammies at Reykjavik. Um, I'm probably forgetting somebody. Uh, and let me know who I'm forgetting because I definitely am. But he's been sick. I think it's going to be really hard to replace him um, with a boot coming to the next uh, split. But I think some team will end up picking up Patatek and making a change in their roster or something like that. Then next up we have Gen G. All right, so I tried to trim out the last part of that um, clip with talking about Gen G, but the fucking video quality just tanked, and Team Heretics logo was just a blob of black, so I just left that in there. Um, but I think Gen G is an insane team. I was so happy to see them perform so well with Texture being one of my favorite players for a long time. Um, Karen looked really good. Meteor looked really good, which I think those three are the best trio in Pacific right now. Um, at least the best Korean trio. Um, I think they are better than that Stax, Mako, Buzz, at least at the moment. I think Texture is better than Buzz. Um, I think Meteor is better than whoever you want to compare him against um, in that trio. Actually, well, he's better than, we'll say, Stax right now. Because I think Mako is still better than Charon, but the gap is closing quickly. Um and yeah, I just think they're those three are going to be able to win them some games at this event. Um, I do have some questions about Munchkin as an individual, um, if he can continue his form from like the last couple games of the Pacific um, playoffs, like against DRX and against PaperX. I thought he played insane, like the best I've ever seen him play. Um, the fundamentals with this team are one thing that I really noticed. I thought they were really good at that. Um, but I do have some questions about like their calling and their mid rounding from Lockia or Munchkin, whoever the hell it is. I think it's Lockia just because like his individual performance dipped a lot more than it did with Munchkin. So I'm gonna assume he's still IGLing, but there's a lot of people giving mixed opinions on that, and I think it could just end up being both. And I think the combination of the two is actually good for this team. Um, I did think the calling looked good. In Pacific, I don't think it looked great. I just want to see how it'll match up at an international level with this team. And then next up here in this, one of these teams will suck, one of these teams will be sick. Um, tier is Carmen Core, who I think the top point here with this team is their coaching. Aang, I think, is a top three coach in the world uh, behind both Potter and Alex right now. I'm not counting many just because, like, A... I'm not big on Mini as a coach, but also, like, he's not a head coach anymore. I probably would ha have him over Aang if he was a head coach right now. I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm not including him in the ranking, is my point. Um, I just think he's done so much good with these these five and gotten the absolute most out of them. Um, Narrate looks like an insane initiator player. Um, I was really low on his duelist play in NA. I did not like it. I'll be honest, um, but I did think a transition to a more supportive role would be better for him. I didn't see like the over the top insane mechanics. Like I don't think he had Alpha Year 10's Demon One esque mechanics, but I do think he had maybe like I don't know around like your like Leo like very high end, but not like over the top absurd gonna hit the most insane shots all the time. Um, I thought he was very very good at this tournament and probably their best player and just another win for na baby um they will be the emea team i'm rooting for but i also like benji on heretics because like i used to play fortnite a lot so i don't know just a, just a small thing there i also thought shin and martin were sick as individuals but they really need to step up in this tournament if army Corps wants to go deep um i do think this team has the deepest map pool at this tournament they can play like Five to six maps realistically i don't know if they'll win on a lot of those maps just because i trust some other teams more like your sentinels your loud your paper x your, i mean just these last four teams that are here um and then to me there is one big question with this team and that is their mid-rounding slash igling whatever you want to call it um when they have five really inexperienced or four really inexperienced players plus uh, inexperienced IGL and Magnum. Uh, this was his first tournament calling. <laughs> Jesus, excuse me. Um, that was going really good, so I can't I can't stop this. Um, I just have some questions about how they'll be able to IGL in mid-round against these top teams, um, but I think if anybody can get 
coach it into them, it's Aang. So that is why they're at the top of this tier. Then next up here, we have our could be a favorite, but a little bit unsure about some of these teams. Um, and first up, we have EDG, who I think are pretty much the same team as you've seen at Champions and at Tokyo. Um, Kang Kang still looks insane. So does Shishu, so does Smoggy. Um, so does their mid rounding from Haodong. I think all of it is still really good. Um, I think nobody looks better on this like more passive initiator role, like the Sova stuff that he's been playing. Um, I think he's cut back on the feeding a lot that he was doing at Champs, where he was just like running it down on Sky or lurking on Sky. And there was really no in between. I think he's looking better. I just don't think his mechanics are necessarily there to do that, along with Haodong. Um, I think he's taken a little bit of a step back as an individual. Maybe that's just because I've seen other people pass him up, and I think that's probably what it is. Um, but I don't think he's insane anymore like he used to be. Um, and overall, just I think this team is going to be more consistent than they have been in individual games. Um, but I do have questions about their like general game plans and like ideas. Their mid-rounding, I think, is pretty good. And I think they can work their way through a round and work the map pretty well. I just don't know about, like... Like, Kong Kong lurks so much on attack. He did it quite a bit on Breeze in the final, where he would just, like, walk up halls with the op, which I don't have too much of an issue with when they're hitting A, because he can just open the door and fight like that, and that's whatever, and the A choke is pretty easy to get out of on Breeze. But when he's doing it on, like, Split, where they're, like taking a lot of B main control and mid control and heaven control, and then he's walking through a ramp on his own on raise when they don't have another duel. That just doesn't make sense to me. Um, I think if they can figure some of that stuff out, I think they could end up being a favorite, but I really just am not sure about this team. And then next up at third, I have Paper Rex in this. Could be a favorite, but a little bit unsure tier. Um, Meunier um, is taking time to get integrated here. As, as I expected, just I don't think it was as drastically bad as I expected. I think I, I think I pushed the take a little far too on the other or too far on the other end. I thought they kind of just played really well against Gen G. Um and didn't really have to do too much against some of the other teams. Um but yeah, I thought Monier looked good. I just don't think he looked great. Um I thought stylistically he actually looked pretty similar to Jing on the Rays when they when he played it on Lotus which was kind of weird to me. Um, but as a whole, I think Paper X's individuals looked a little bit worse than you'd expect, um, but you'd expect them to get better for this international event, um, as I think a lot of their game plans will. Um, but also, I just don't see some of these comps that they're running working against teams at an international level, like their split comp with a triple duelist, obviously, um, against teams like Carmen Core, like Sentinels, like Loud. I think that would get very much exploited. Um, their Ascent comp, I think, could be exploited as well. Um, I, I, I just don't see that working at a high level. Um, and then their Bind comp. Not that the comp as a whole is necessarily bad. Um, I just don't like something being the one playing Gecko. I think if he and Forsaken swapped the roles, I think that comp would look a lot better. Um, also Forsaken was just not playing well in that game. He went like 8-17 and 17 on Bind against, uh, Genji in the final, so... You'd hope they change some of their comps up, but the reason I'm a little bit more hopeful about Paper X than I am about Gen G fixing this, or not Gen G, about EDG fixing some of their stuff is just because Paper X has had a lot more time than every other team to change up this stuff. Um, and I think they'll end up looking a lot better. Um, and some of the individuals might be in different form. Um, I don't know about this team winning the tournament necessarily, but I think there's part of me that believes that. If Paper X doesn't win this tournament, I don't know if they ever will. And last up here, we have this last tier of Loud and Sentinels. I'm going to talk about Loud first. Um, I think they, starting off, have a top two duo in the world with Les and Kawanzin. Um, we'll get to the top one duo in the world in a second once I'm done with them. Um, I think they've just perfectly maneuvered this losing Ospos situation. Um, they're not really trying to replace Aspas as much as they are reinventing themselves without him. Playing this new, like, Phoenix, Breach, KO on every map stuff. Less on Viper on every map. No Sentinel. Um, I think it is 
a very good idea, and I think it got them through kickoff, won them some games, won them some maps here and there. Where my questions are, with this team being second rather than first, is whether they can do it on all, like, what, four maps that they played it on? They played it on Ascent, Bind, Lotus, and Sunset. I'm not exactly sure how much this is going to work in the future on maps like Sunset and Lotus specifically. Um, I think Lotus has a, like, it's a very, like, mid-roundy map. It just makes it impossible to defend on that map. Along with Sunset, where it's, like, a very, like, lurk-heavy map, in my opinion, and I just don't think playing no Sentinel on that map is very viable right now. Um, I do think that this team can adjust. I think they can just go back to running more default stuff on each map, specifically Ascent. Um, if... A team brings out a specific anti, kind of like EG did for that map. I think Loud could potentially change it up and just run the default comp with QCK, Jet, uh, Sadak, KO, Cowanzine, Sova, Last Killjoy, and Tui's on uh, Omen. Um, and I think they'd be perfectly fine with that. I think they can run um, the Lotus, like Fnatic comp, pretty decently. I just overall, I think loud can readjust run some more default stuff i think overall they will be fine i just am not as confident in them as i am in sentinels and yeah last up here we have sentinels at number one um, as i said before i have zekin and tens as the best duo in the world and i think along with them i think playing better at kickoff um i think they just end up working together more which is kind of why i have them over Cowanzine and less. Um, I think the Zelsis and John like calling slash leadership structure is absurd. Getting also adding Kaplan in there, who's worked with John before, I think was insane for this team. Um, Saucy's looked better and better every game. Um, and realistically, outside of their map pool, I don't see too many weaknesses with this team. Now, I think you can realistically say. That Sentinels have question has big questions on four out of the seven maps. They have questions on Ascent, Bind, Breeze, Icebox, and that was it. Um, there are also there are also some questions on Lotus. Yeah, they beat Loud 13-4 on that map, but Loud had never played Lotus with this team ever, and they played a terrible comp. And they just didn't play well in general. And Sen won eight clutches or something like that. Just an absurd number. Um, obviously, if this event was played on... As I think this is exactly what TMV said. But if this event was played on Split and Sunset only, they would win. And it wouldn't even be remotely close. They would 13-10 every team at the worst. Um, like That's if they have like a bad game on one of those maps. Um I do think their split is a little bit overrated, um, not in the sense that it's not the best in the world by a good margin. I just don't think it's in that tier of like the EG fracture kind of stuff where like you have to ban it against them even instead of your perma ban um, because they're that good. I don't think Sentinels is that good at that map. Um, also, they have another map like Sunset that's on par as good as they are on split. Um, I think if they can fix maybe like one or two maps, I think this team should be able to win this tournament. Um, like if they go and fix their ascent, maybe run a different comp or something like that on that map, I think that would be really good for them. Um, get tens off of this like off this omen, which is more of a hard anchor on ascent. Um, get them on something different, maybe like a KO, and then Celsius plays something different. You could see multiple different outcomes for this team. Um, on that map, I think they they put some work into their bind to maybe run a different comp on that. I think realistically they will change up one of their comps or get better at a map like Icebox, um, and then they should be very, very well set up to win this tournament, especially with the individual form that they're in. Um, all of these players shot up my uh, player rankings, so if you're interested in, interested in that, go check those out. Uh, but yeah, that's it for my power rankings. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, I'm really interested to see what people think of this. I don't think these takes are super hot. I think Carmine Core is going to be a little low for some people. I think having Gen G over Heretics is a little hot, um, but I think these are pretty standard picks. Um, for
for most people. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And yeah, without further ado, that's the end of the video. I'll see you guys in the next one for probably my top 10 players um, going into the event. So yeah, see you guys in the next one. Peace.